So talking oil bunkery in Nigeria, who is involved? We are actually concerned. And we have Eugene Abel to discuss this with us. All. Good morning, Mr. Eugene. Good morning, can you hear us? Mr. Eugene, can you hear us? I All right, think Mr. Eugene, can yeah. you hear us? Okay. Can you hear me now? Y yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Can you Hello, hear Mr. me Eugene? now? Mr. Eugene Abels from Port Harcourt, River State, Nigeria. Can you hear us? I can hear you very well. Good morning for having me. Yes. Good morning this morning. I mean, just straight to the point, who steals Nigeria's oil? <laughs> well, um, the, first of all, uh, it would be nice to educate the public on what bunkering means. Bunkering is um, an activity that is done by the sole government organized agency, NMPC, in supporting the maritime sector whereby smaller vessels come into the shipping channels take products and supply those super tankers and maybe like fuel while other support services will come it's called bunkering but in the, in the context of this conversation we're talking about the same um, bunkering today um it's considered to be illegal if you're not registered or being assigned by the nnpcl to do this business so today we know bunkering, illegal bunkering, to be the activities of non-state actors who steal our crude oil, who refine them illegally, who sell them illegally, and those who break up, vandalize our pipelines and so on. So concerning who that question, who steals them? Well, non-state actors, criminals. So whether you're in suit or in uniform, once you break the law, and it is your confirmed, you are assumed to be a criminal. So criminals steal our products. But if you listen to Omar Lafay, the regulator, last week, while he was on Arise TV, and uh, he was severally asked, how much are we losing from oil theft? He kept referring to meters of the oil producing companies then. And he was unable to answer that question clearly. I also like, before I go further on that, let me explain something here. Illegal, it, where they bring a lot of crude oil is being stolen. Crude oil is not something you carry in a truck. You can carry in a truck, but how many trucks you can you mobilize 500 trucks, for instance, to take a million barrels of crude? That's probably not possible. So meaning that the bulk of this, um, the loss we experience happens with marine vessels, ocean-going vessels, meaning that whatever is stolen is taken out of the country and sold illegally, probably refined and brought back to us as um, petroleum products which we buy. But that does not stop the activities that are happening within the country where gangs, uh, called groups, um, security, supposedly, everything I've said is the public domain. Security, um, they collaborate with, so sometimes with um, crook, I use the word crook, security members of security agencies to, to tap, to illegally tap into the pipelines that is supposed to be conveying crude to the various terminals in Brass and Bonny. They tap into, and the scrappers, they tap into these lines still crude, refine them as diesel, primarily as diesel, and sell, and they're able to access our national supply uh, retail lines, which are the filling stations, which so most times, most of the diesel you buy are from those illegal artisanal refiners. I don't know, you must have heard about kerosene explosion. Most times it's the products from those people that cause those kerosene explosion. So I'd like right. to explain this part. For the bulk, major loss of oil comes from uh, being done via the ocean, 
that people very smaller vessels still from within take it out of the country to bigger vessels. So I would like to quote the commander Mafema, the man of the, the regulatory man, former DPRO, now MPR, MP, whatever they call them. He kept referring that, he kept saying that the metering, because of that he has set up an auditor committee, now they've even awarded contracts for metering. So as we speak, he's not sure of how much we lose. All right. In terms I mean, of, uh, yeah. It's interesting that um, we don't even know how much we lose in terms of uh, oil. And I'm wondering how much can be quantified in terms of the dollars that we may probably have, may have lost from not even knowing the amount of oil that we have lost. Um, it is not you and I, it's not a poor man who gets into oil bunkering. I mean, there should be a level of sophistication for you to be able to get into that space and not just get into that space, but stealing and leaving without any trace. I mean, don't you think there is there is some, some level of collaboration beyond the non-state actors that you mentioned? Don't you think there is a level of collaboration between these non-state actors and those who are in authority? Okay, well, the, the easiest way to answer this question would have been just to go straight to say, oh, security agencies are compromised and so on. That would have been the easiest question. But, like, I would like to take you back to Mr. Kamal Affair. He's been in office for about four years. He's thinking about replacing meters that oil com the producing companies have. Remember now we have marginal field operators, so it's no longer just the uh, IOCs, which are Shell, Chevron, Mobile, and this. Now you have other smaller um, organizations like Seplat, Platform, Petroleum, um, Transcorp, and the rest of them who are also producing crude. What I would expect to say is that if you ask Dangote today what is the production capacity of a refiner, he will tell you. If you ask him what is the production capital of your cement factories daily, he will tell you. What I would have expected Kamal Affair to say is to tell us that Nigerian, that on today, Thursday, 25th of July, that total production from all fields amounted to 10. Out of that, we lost five. I uh, lost five from it. He's been unable to tell us that. They keep throwing at us daily production figures of oil, but they're not telling us actual production figure and what was lost. When we deal with that very that one, which is at the peak, the apex of this of the of the contradiction which we have, then we can now begin to talk about how we are foreigners. In collaboration with locals who are non-state actors are able to access bring in vessels tap our lines and take crude out you remember the incident that happened in december last year when tompolo's firm tantania accosted a vehicle a vessel that they tracked from ghana into nigeria and they even came on a rice tv to talk about it officially as we speak till date government has not issued a clear statement on that incident. So, in terms of compromise, it is obvious that the Nigerian state is turning a blind eye to a lot of activities that are going on in that sector, particularly when it comes to available statistics and also uh, ensuring that those things that happen that are illegal don't happen anymore. Um, doctor, I'm sorry, I mean, Doctor, I mean, Mr. Eugene Abel, um, from your statement, uh, with what's um, the development that, mean, that happened with Tompolo, and beyond your statement, does it mean that Nigerian governments are aiding and abetting those, those who are stealing this oil, or possibly the ones stealing it? Uh, well, I wouldn't. Like, it would be it would be irresponsible for me to say that the government in power is aiding and abetting, because um, that means they are breaking the law. 
I will say that I've, they have found one thing in terms of the ability to enforce the proper things to be done. The incident I have cited, I expect that now seven months down the line, that the, the, the government come out with very clear statements on that incident. For instance, that all vessels are registered with Lloyd's Insurance in of England. So it is not difficult to that vehicle vessel. <laughs> and who are the government officials, but the security agencies who went to confront the Tompolo team? What has happened to them? Have they been taken before a court martial or before a civil court? Have people been sent? So all of these are yearning gaps which makes the average person wonder I, I which Maybe that's what uh, eliciting the kind of question you just asked. But I think that the, the government has not done sufficient, it's not, has not done well in terms of reorganizing that sector, so that there are clear accountability and that people are made to pay get in an illegal, uh, illegal bunkering of our crew. So I, yeah, I get your uh, patronage of being patriotic. But, you know, these <laughs> vessels are not um, like what, you know, uh, when you're younger, there's this uh, uh, ship that kids make with uh, paper that could disappear. So these vessels are large vessels to be able to do, uh, conduct this act successfully. So before they enter our space, it's, po it's not impossible that they, they're not seen before they, it's been... Uh, the oil is being siphoned or they, they take what they take and go move to wherever they 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 they're designated to move so would in saying that the government is actually carrying out um they are being slow towards it how slow or is it an intentional act well uh, i think i'll agree with you that beyond slow I, I see inaction. The reason is this, is that, you know, we're suffering currently. The government is struggling in terms of uh, funding, and that's why we're borrowing. The government is struggling in the sense that we can't even have an open quota to enable us to earn legitimate revenue so that they can even fund the wage increase and other things they have they promised us. The government recently, through the Minister for um, Works, is even complaining that they are looking for people who can invest in repairing the major trunk roads that link the various regions of the country. They need money. So if a man who needs money or a family that needs money at a time like this will not allow the only revenue earner it has to be stolen. They will not allow that to happen. Yes. If you go to Asian countries, if you go to the Asian countries, before you approach passport, they walk up to you and say, look, if you're carrying drugs, let us know now before they stamp that your passport. And don't go, if you go beyond that passport line, the penalty will be death. In Malaysia, in Thailand, in Singapore, you have those kind of things there. And so they give you an opportunity, and you know what the consequences are when you take that step. Now, for a country that is a monoproduct, and has a monoproduct economy. I think it is it is not to it's not responsible that at this time and day where we know that Nimasa and the Navy have cameras overlooking all our beaches and uh, major creeks and shipping lanes, we know, just as you like rightly mentioned, that a vessel that can carry crude Will not, it's not like a car that just drives the literature and go away. No, it will take time to come in and move things out there. And we know that the electronic, um, the electronic um, devices that enables you to measure your pipelines when pressure is lost, and you'll be able to pinpoint what's available there. With drones, you can even accomplish more. So I still don't see seriousness. I have not seen a clear cut seriousness from the government to attack this mess and you can't be struggling when you're looking for what you have to sell to make money you're losing it daily you all we have um i think 
it is not nice. It doesn't make sense for me. Okay, so is it real? First, um, is it realistic that Nigerians are saying that the government is saying we are actually having to borrow money? Um, if, if you remember a while ago, um, the former governor of Delta State, Ibori, actually stated that over three not over, 300,000 BPD, that's barrel per day of, um, what's it called, um, are lost oh, yeah. as a result of bunkering. Now, how much of revenue does Nigeria lose annually? Can you, like, give us an average of how much revenue Nigeria loses annually um, as a result of oil bunkering or illegal yes, oil bunkering? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Well, I will not be able to categorically state that. Why? Because the main regulator who is supposed to ascertain quantity and quality, Kamal Affair, has not been able to give us that figure of what the total production capacity of the state of the state of the state when I say state, Nigeria is daily. When you add NMPC's rigs and um, well oil wells and oil my the three major people who produce oil crude oil in Nigeria are one. NMPC two, the IOC, Chevron Mobile, uh, Exxon Mobil, Tota, and ENI, which is Ajib. Then the other group are Nigerian players like Seplat Platform and the rest of that. So all of this, if NMPC cannot, uh, uh, NPR, NPRUC cannot tell us what they produce daily, we will not be able to ascertain what we actually lose daily. Right. All they tell us that. 1.2 million barrels so right now as at last week we were producing about about 1.3 1.4 million barrels less condensed so if they do not so if i have a 1000 capacity um factory i should be able to tell you what it produces daily now what it produces daily will not confirm what was actually received at the terminal so if we can't tell this figure and we're not telling this figure how are they ascertaining what to lose? We might even be losing much, much, much more than we think and can imagine. You know, yesterday we hosted a retired naval officer who told us clearly that you can't steal Nigeria's oil field without the authorities knowing about it. That there is a collaboration between these non-state actors and those who are in authority. I mean, if those who are in authority are involved in this stealing, I mean, do you even see an end in sight? Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, like, like I said, uh, like your colleague mentioned, uh, and I mentioned that um, it, it, to steal crude with a ship is not you just uh, not a day's thing. You days are spent sailing into. Our coastal waters getting clearance, going to whatever pump head you want to go to. Then before you take two days to fill to fill that particular tanker, then it begins to sail out of that position. So I, I will agree with that that there's a clear case of connivance. I will agree that uh, there's a clear case of uh, irresponsibility, and um, and this high level of responsibility. If we the people put our feet down. This is one of the major causes of hunger, and put our feet down. And what would make us put our feet down? I mean, yeah, every you, now and then you, you hear, oh, we have all the security measures to check these things, and still these things happen. How do we put our feet down? Who put our feet down? If those who are in authority, who are NIMASA, NMPC, looking above all of these things, are not putting their feet down, who does? Me? You? You and the employers call them out. Call them. I did that probably come to apologize. If we didn't call out people, you think we are putting this democracy? Call them out. You are the employer, you own it. If you know anybody who's still in communities, know the people who operate. If the communities don't, even for the illegal ones within our communities, if you want to, we do. How do we check bunker in a community in the Niger Delta? We say just look at when you see any new roof check so you go to communities you're not seeing any particular economic activity but you're seeing new roofs being built every day it means that something's going on there in the night go back there we know ourselves like the last program that ended before this the speaker was saying say, inside right they call outside right 
we have given up our responsibility. We are waiting for Ndiaye Gebre to come and do what is right. We forget that this democracy, people died for it. Abiola died, his wife died. Other people were killed. Remember the role of Sergeant Major and so We grew up under the military era. Several soldiers who were beaten, arrested, and so on. But so now you, are, you have employed people. No matter how they came into power, if that person is occupying a public office, call out the person. If the chief of Naval staff is not doing what he's supposed to do, we call him out. You see how the way people are interrogating the Dangote, NMPC, Wahala. Now they are forced to have a meeting. Let's begin to be a bit more detailed beyond rhetoric. You're talking about hunger. Where is the hunger coming from? This is one of the prime, the root cause of your hunger. In the sense that what is supposed to be any money for you, those who have been paid to secure it are not doing their jobs. So we ask for them to be changed. We call out their names, publish their phone numbers. These are facilities that are not available when we were younger, but now they're available. Let's research the process. Let's ask the relevant question. Let us remind ourselves the primary responsibility on how this government function is dependent on us. In River State, we will say as usual, how many them be? Total number of elected officials are less than 12,000. And they're holding over 200 million voodoo ransom. All right. It's rubbish. We sincerely appreciate Thank you so yes. much. Uh, Th Mr. Thank you so much. We have Eugene, to leave it there. You know, we sincerely appreciate your, your input and contribution. Thank you very much, sir. Thank, Thank you, you for having me. Okay, so um, up next, uh, we take a break and don't forget we internet watch. You go nowhere, you don't want to miss that. We'll be right back. <laughs>